Hi, I'm Greg Basich. I'm Associate Director focused on auto automotive at CounterPoint Research. And I'm here with Cyril Lamar from TomTom. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the trends we're seeing at CES and how that plays into the larger trends in the automotive industry in general. So one of the trends I've, so I've seen at CES so far is that of speeding up development, especially software development, um, separating the development process that's normally been very um, associated with hardware, uh, separating hardware and software. So what are some of the ways that TomTom Tom is working to speed up the development process, enhance the developer experience, and ultimately provide a better experience for end users? AI is indeed right uh, part of the discussion, and AI is now supporting the entire value chain, right? So the way we are looking at AI at TomTom Tom is really like supporting our customers to accelerate them to market. Mm -hmm. From the TomTom Tom perspective, that means designing products based on AI up to improving the developer experience with AI toolkits that support better integration of our portfolio, mm -hmm. up to enhancing the end user experience with AI integrated our products and bringing that sort of like dimension of proactive personal assistance that really like supports solving problems for the driver behind the wheels, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's really way, the way we are looking at uh, AI attempt. Are there certain solutions you have here at CES that really demonstrate how you're doing this and certain tools you're announcing? Yeah, yeah. there's like three things that I would like to mention, mm -hmm. right? First uh, is our BISMA platform, right? So we've been engineering over the last past four years a new way of building maps, right? You know that we've taken an open uh, collaborative uh, ecosystem approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we are co-founding, right? We have co-founded the Virtual Map Foundation with mm -hmm. Microsoft, Meta, Amazon in order to bring, uh, let's say, that open and collaborative approach into everything we do. Mm -hmm. And our AI process of building that map right now mm -hmm. enable to produce to produce 3D lane geometry for supporting higher level of automation as well as new uh, map visualization capabilities mm -hmm. at the pace, the freshness, and at the level of uh, coverage mm -hmm. uh, that is in precedence, right? So we are not talking anymore about highways. We are talking also about every single road class is on the road, right? So that's one element that is important when it comes to AI, that's our map making process, which is now ready to deliver those uh, specific data. Mm -hmm. Another element is the developer experience. It's not just enough to deliver good content, mm -hmm. we want also to deliver, to deliver best tools right. in order to support a frictionless developer experience, right? Mm -hmm. So we are also using AI to navigate our portfolio, and to help developers to really integrate as easy as possible, right, with almost that low-code, uh, zero-code trends, mm -hmm. and really get the most of use of our best of great content and bring that to their own uh, solution, application, mm -hmm. and then make it tailored and customized to their specific needs. So that's the second block. Mm -hmm. And the third blog that I wanted to mention, right, is last year we've communicated with Microsoft what we were doing around generative AI to support a new generation of voice assistants. So this year we are bringing that to the next level. Not only we bring that voice assistants to products, so now it's ready to uh, sell. We are also like thinking about AI as a predictive assistant to support, uh, let's say, use cases that goes beyond complex search, right? Okay. We want to make sure that when you know where you are going in 90% mm -hmm. of the case, this is true. You go to work, you go to the gym, mm -hmm. you go to pick the kid at, at the daycare, but you know where you want to go. We want still to provide some proactive assistance for the driver uh, to mitigate the risk of any changes that are happening on the road. Be it there's a traffic jam, be it there's a safety related issue, be it uh, your traditional EV charge point is fully occupied. We want to have some very uh, intuitive uh, engagement with the end user, with the driver, in order to maximize the use of the navigation system, even where you know exactly where you want to go. Okay. So, in terms of what end users will ultimately experience? What would you say are some of the some of the key things if you've done any kind of research or any other kind of work to determine 
what are end users really going to benefit from going forward in terms of say proactive assistance yeah. where there's certain certain uh use cases that are key use cases that are very high value to most end users that you look yeah. at yeah so um, at some time we have a long uh, legacy growing product in the consumer in the consumer business right so and we still have a strong footprint on that. So we always have sort of like top of mind in our uh, agenda, right? How we can solve basically end user problem. And that part of the DNA of the company. And we are still very active on that, right? Mm -hmm. So we have dedicated teams doing mm -hmm. uh, and conducting user research mm -hmm. on a daily basis in order to provide that best experience, mm -hmm. right? And what we, what we find out, as I was saying before, is that 90% of the time, people know exactly where, where mm -hmm. they want to go. Right. So we want to make sure that we can provide a uh, specific, uh, support, right? Like I know that I need to, to go to work. Uh, I have a company and application that can give me a voice prompt by informing me, Hey, there's some traffic building on your road to office. Maybe better you leave uh, a bit earlier if you want to be on time. Right. Right. So that's one use case when you are getting to the office, maybe you can have a voice prompt saying, Hey, we figured out that the charging station that you are uh, normally going to is fully occupied, but we know that three minute walking distance away from your, uh, let's say traditional location uh, mm -hmm. position, there is another one that you can use, right? Please guide me there, mm -hmm. right? And then engage that proactive decisions, right? But it can also be as simple as, hey, we know that you are quite stressed because you need to go to the daycare and pick the kid. It's 6 p.m. It's closing at 6 you have 10 minutes to get there. We can also provide uh, very intuitive feedback to the driver and say, hey, let's uh, calm down. Traffic condition are still okay. Mm -hmm. Don't over speed. There's camera on the road. Right. Get a ticket for that, right? Mm -hmm. And really to sort of like re ensure in a very specific uh, this, um, critical uh, situation and uh, getting uh, kids at the daycare is always uh, top of mind uh, right. specifically for younger parents, mm -hmm. right? right. Uh, and, and these kind of things. So we can really solve those problems by providing mm -hmm. that sort of like AI assistance and support that. Okay, great. Is there a key message that you want to deliver on TomTom's positioning in the market in the coming year as we move into 2025? Yeah, we want to we support our customer to go fast to market. Uh, at CS, uh, especially we are looking mainly at the automotive industry there. So we want to provide 3D lane geometry with centimeter precision at scale, okay. right? And that means that every single road network will be covered. Mm -hmm. And we want also to support global scalability, looking at US, Europe, but also extend it to the rest of the world as we move on, right? So that's really the key message for us. Uh, we don't want to focus on specific cities. We don't want to specific and limit ourselves to highways and really to enable our customers to get to the next generation of digital cockpits, the next generation of LS system, and support them globally, right? And then the, the key message there is that we need to go fast, right? So we want to basically accelerate the time to market. And that means also that we want to support the developer tools, right? Mm -hmm. That will support also that, that time to market and make our technology easy to integrate and uh, easy for the brand to customize their experience according uh, to their uh, brand design, right? Uh, so that's really enabling the business, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the demos myself and uh, speaking with you in the future. Let's go there. All right, thanks so much. <laughs> thanks yeah. a lot.